Hey guys, I'm Theobald Hedman and you're watching Southern Ingenuity. What you're looking at right now is a tool that I'm designing to increase the efficiency of frequent adjustments on the machines where I work. It's designed to access adjustment screws that are in a tight and somewhat confined location. The tool utilizes miniature roller chain and sprockets to manipulate the screws from outside of the confined area. Now due to the size constraints of the tool, it's not feasible to use commercially available sprockets. So I had to integrate a sprocket into the design of each spindle and its crank drive. The outside diameter of each sprocket is about the size of a dime. Precise spacing and the properly curved profile of each tooth is going to be critical to ensure that it meshes perfectly with number 15 roller chain. Now, I don't have a CNC. I've only got manual tools at my disposal. So I had to figure out a way to make these parts using just a manual milling machine and a dividing head. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built a specialized jig to quickly and accurately cut each tooth on these miniature sprockets. This sprocket cutting jig will be the fourth in a series of jigs and fixtures that I've had to make before I can begin working on the tool itself. I had to make a work holding plate for my dividing head and some work holding clamps to use with it. I also had to make some customized positive stops for the dividing head, and you'll see all of these in action a little later on in the video. Here, I'm making the base plate for the sprocket jig. It's made from half inch thick aluminum. This 3 16 inch hole will be a locating position to ensure precise alignment of the indexing plate on the chucking assembly. The center of the plate will have a 5 8 inch hole where the chucking assembly will mount and rotate. The slotted holes on the corners will allow for the entire assembly to be correctly positioned on the dividing head and clamped into place. Next, I make the indexing plate, and it too is made from half inch thick aluminum. The arbor on a standard drill chuck is going to pass through this 5 8 inch hole and into the base plate. This hole is for a dowel pin and it will act as a key to prevent the part from rotating while it's being machined. I don't have a rotary table, so I'll be using my dividing head outfitted with the work holding plate that I mentioned earlier. Now, a dividing head is probably not the best tool for cutting circular parts like this, but it's all that I had to work with. There was some backlash in the drive gears that I couldn't totally get out, and this created considerable vibration and chatter. But ultimately, I found that climb milling seemed to work better than conventional milling for cutting this particular part. The indexing plate will have 10 holes evenly spaced along a 2 inch radius from the center. These holes will be locating points used to precisely align the sprocket at each position where a tooth will be cut. The holes are 3 16 of an inch in diameter and will line up with the locating hole in the base plate. For this jig to work correctly, I needed a way to securely clamp the sprocket blanks so that they could be rotated around their centerline axis. I decided to purchase an inexpensive drill chuck to do this. Here, I'm drilling and counterboring some holes to attach the chuck to the indexing plate. I 
I also purchased a 5 8 inch arbor to fit the drill chuck. This ensures that the chuck and the spindle blanks clamped in it will be centered with the 5 8 inch hole in the base plate. Here, I'm drilling and tapping some holes in the chuck so that it can be secured to the indexing plate with some 832 socket head cap screws. When the jig is mounted into position, the centerline axis of the chuck is not going to be perfectly centered with the rotational axis of the dividing head. Here I'm cutting the excess length from the arbor so that it doesn't extend beyond the bottom of the base plate. This part is going to be a clamp to prevent the indexing plate from lifting up or vibrating while the teeth are being machined into the sprockets. With my machining skills still at a novice level, I know that this jig isn't going to be perfect. There's bound to be slight inconsistencies across the surfaces of the base plate and the indexing plate. Here, I'm numbering the locating holes so that I can check and make corrections for any run out at each position. As you can see here, the locating hole in the base plate lines up with the locating holes in the indexing plate. This allows the chuck to be precisely positioned so that each tooth on the sprocket can be cut with the proper spacing from the others. The clamp secures the indexing plate to the base to prevent vibrations and chatter. The key to making all of this work is the correct positioning of the jig and the cutting tool relative to our zero point, which is the rotational axis of the dividing head. To correctly position the jig, a dowel pin is used to hold the base plate stationary while the table and the dividing head are moved 304 thousandths to the right. This locates the jig so that the pitch radius of the sprocket will be directly over zero. The base plate is then secured to the dividing head at that position. With the base plate secured, the chucking assembly is installed and the table is moved back to the zero position. Here you can see the cutter located directly over the pitch radius of the sprocket at zero. The table is then moved to its final position, putting the center of the cutter 187 thousandths to the right of zero.
This next part of the setup is critical for maintaining the correct root diameter of the sprocket. The teeth will be cut by rotating the dividing head through an arc that is precisely 216 degrees. I can't overshoot at either end of that arc or it'll ruin the part. Here I'm installing the positive stops that I mentioned earlier. They ensure that the dividing head stops exactly 108 degrees from the center of the arc in both directions. This quick animation shows how the whole process is supposed to work. The dividing head is rotated through the 216 degree arc, cutting a partial notch for the roller chain at each end. The sprocket is then indexed to the next position. These actions are repeated until all of the teeth have been cut. Overall, I've got to say that I'm really pleased with the way this sprocket cutting jig turned out. There are a few positions where it cut a little bit too deep, but I think I can prevent this next time by using some shims between the indexing plate and the base plate. I'll just have to do some measuring with the indicator so that I can locate and correct the runout. And this spindle was just a proof of concept part anyway, just a practice part if you will. It's not going to be used in the finished tool. I'm probably going to make a few more sprocket blanks so that I can test different dimensions and tooth profiles to see which one gives me the best interaction with the roller chain. Oh, and by the way, I don't have a lathe either. I'm going to have to make these spindles on my milling machine as well. So if you'd like to see how I do that, be sure to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell. And if you've got any suggestions on how I can improve the design of the sprocket jig, I'd love to hear your ideas. Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to click the like button and share it with your friends. So until next time, I'm Thea Baldheadman. Thanks for watching Southern Ingenuity.